In this video, I'm going to be talking about the two ways I've found to stretch and shape rings without an ex like an expensive over $100 um, ring stretcher reducer rig. Um, the first one I used was this uh, Schedule 40 uh, three quarter inch PVC pipe with a cap on it. And what I would do with this is I would I would put my um, folded ring, which I used a doming block to fold it because when it's just cut and flat, it would not fit on my ring mandrel. Now, if you have a regular size ring mandrel, which I do now, it will fit over the top there. So you don't need a doming block unless you have like a dumb short mandrel like I do. But that's what I did. I domed it so it would fit on the mandrel and then I put the PVC pipe on top and hammered it down, okay? And what that would do is stretch and shape the ring and then I would take it off and put the cut side down and hammer it back down again to even it out. And that's pretty much where I would stop before I got uh, this reducing die, which now allows me to reshape and resize rings. And this is what I use to start my second uh, cheap way to shape and stretch rings. And this gets me to this stage here, okay? What I do is I, I start with this, I put it in the doming block for the first fold, and then I use this folding cone and this folding die to get it stretched this far, and then I put it on this Rathburn ring stretcher, and that gets me to a ring looking like this and then I can reduce that in this reduction die. So this is something you're really gonna need to make coin rings if you wanna resize them or get different shapes and if you're gonna wanna use a Rathburn ring stretcher. But this is really handy, they're like $20 uh, compared to, you know, like a over $100 ring stretcher reducer. I think it's pretty cool. I did make a video earlier today recommending that you don't use a metal hammer while you're using this because you will damage it and fray out this back end and it'll get stuck and won't be able to go through that hole. Uh, I'd been doing that and I learned my lesson. I'm just using a plastic mallet on it now. It works just as well and it doesn't tear it up. Now um, I am going to need to rebuild this PVC pipe. So I'm gonna try and film that for you guys now so you can kind of figure out how to make one yourself. That's pretty basic. Uh, what I'm gonna to need to do is cut off across here evenly and then I'll uh, sand it on some concrete and it should be ready to go. Once that side is even, uh, it works. Now after like 50 coin rings, it does get worn down inside because this is just plastic and it has a tendency to crack if it's not reinforced with something. So I use Gorilla Tape on the outside of this to keep it from cracking and it didn't crack while the tape was on it, but it did wear away on the inside and I ended up getting a ring stuck in there after like the 60th one I stretched out. So I had to cut it out and uh, now I'm going to cut it back here and even it up and get it so it will work again. Um, this is probably the cheapest way to go. This was like $2. Uh, this was, I don't know, like $10. And if you get a regular mandrel, it's like 20 to 30 bucks. But this is my favorite way to do it. Uh, and this is like $20, but you still need to get the reduction die. And these are both in my recommended tool list, which is linked below as well as this quarter punch, which I've been talking about a lot today. And this just punches half inch uh, holes in the center of quarters, it's perfect. You know, there's no wiggle room, no nothing, works very quickly.
gets the job done and I can run through a bunch of quarters real quick with it. Uh, so now I'm going to try and rebuild this. Let's get so to I tried it. to draw a couple lines around this pipe to get it straight. Uh, I think I'm just going to go with the middle one and I'm just going to saw into it. Okay, so I got it cut off, and you can see how thick it is on the inside here, and like on this side too, but this is the side I've been using to push the coins down in. I don't re recommend putting tape on the inside, that just makes the coins sticky and doesn't really help much. The tape on the outside's good. You can see how worn away it is on there, why my rings were getting stuck inside. Now I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to sand it on my porch and get this as even and flat as I can. So this is uh, my front porch and it's just like concrete and it's pretty good for just sanding this PVC pipe uh, nice and flat and even. You can really sense the high parts and just scratch back and forth. and pull some of this out from inside and out from the outside. Just clear all that off and we'll try and sand it a little more. Good to me. All right, let's take it back inside, and I'll show you how you you can use this. Right, thing. Now that we've got this cut and evened out, I do want to mention this is pretty short, so I'm going to be using this on my shorter mandrel mostly, or um, on my longer mandrel, but only to a certain point. If you're using a longer mandrel, I, I just recommend getting a longer piece of pipe, uh, one that you can handle hammering on, but that's going to suit your mandrel. And this is a Gorilla Tape, and I'm just going to tape the end of this to kind of reinforce it and keep it from cracking under pressure. Alright, so we've got our mandrel, we've got our folded coin, and we're just going to stretch it out using a hammer. And you just want to go down until the lip is, meets the mandrel. Now getting it off of here is kind of tricky. You can use a plastic mallet and hit it at like a 90 degree angle and just try and knock it off. That works fine for the first time, but once you flip it around to the cut edge and stretch it out again, it likes to stick a little more. Sure your ring is even before you try and knock it off of there. And what I like to use at this stage is this little bitty jeweler hammer because I can hit straight down on it and not mess up the ring. So you use a metal hammer to do this. 
you're gonna mess up your ring. That's on there pretty good. One thing I like about this method is it makes your, your ring round right off the bat on the inside compared to the Rathburn ring stretcher or even an expensive ring stretcher which can just point on certain, like push on certain points on the coin and kind of disform it. There we go. Now let's try one on the Rathburn ring stretcher. Where did it go? Here it is. All right, there's our folded ring. And we folded this twice using the doming block and then the 17 degree cone and die and then you just squeeze it onto the top there make sure it's nice and even with that first step and put it on this little holder here slide that spike in use a plastic mallet not a hammer That's going to shape the ring and stretch it at the same time. And I like to go down one more step. I like to rotate the ring a little bit so it's not super deformed in the same places. And just hit it on the bottom to get the spike out. ring and that leaves me at, at a nine sitting at a nice nine I can reduce this down or stretch it out from here but this is a uh, I like my rings to sit before I kind of get them to a customer effective ways I found to stretch out and shape coin rings this is the one that was on the mandrel, and you can see it's still got a nice round shape to it. And this is the one that was on the Rathburn ring stretcher, and you can see that one's got kind of some points. Let's compare them side by side. See the difference? But using the, the, uh, the mandrel, it can get stuck on there, and that can be kind of annoying but it does seem to stretch it more evenly. Now I showed you from here to here on these steps and I feel bad because I didn't show you how I got here or here to here. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I do is I use this tool, which is on my recommended tool list, which is in the description. And I just throw a quarter in here and I put it on top, I put this on here punch a hole through the center of it. Let's do that real quick. Never tried it with that before. It didn't work very well. Yeah. All right, so now we got the center out. Now I've showed you how we got to this first step. Uh, let's look at how we get to the second step. Use a doming block. One ton arbor press, put our coin on there, and a folding ball. So you want to make sure your coin is nice and level in your doming block. Put your folding ball on top of there, and do your first press. Like that. 
how we get it. Awesome camera work here. From here to here. Now to get from here to here, I use this, which is the handiest little tool I have. A 17 degree folding cone. Oh, this is the folding cone. This is the die. I'm just gonna put it in there, try and get it as centered as possible. Put the cone on top. Stretch it a little more. Here I put it on either the mandrel or the Rathburn ring stretcher. And it gets us to here, right there, to here. And then from the ring stretchers we get these. And from here I usually reduce the fat side first and then even up the cut side to it. And that's about it. I hope this video was helpful uh, for anybody looking into getting into coin ring making and doesn't want to spend a whole bunch of money on a ring stretcher reducer. Here are two options for you. All right, have a good day.